Are we expecting anyone else? No, nope, not tonight. Okay. It is Monday, March 21st, 2022. And the Board of Commissioners of the Hardwick Electric Department are meeting. All commissioners are present, as is Mike Sullivan and Beth Essery. So uh, we have a quorum. Are there any modifications to the agenda? And if not, is the agenda approved? Is silence assent? I make a motion. I, have, I had a modification. I can't remember it, so it'll have to wait. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Um, is there a motion to approve the minutes? I make a motion to approve the minutes as is. Uh, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. We probably should raise hands just because <clears throat> it can't necessarily get. Okay, so the minutes are approved. One note, there's no place to sign these minutes. So when they're- We'll add it. Okay, so the first item on the agenda is the <clears throat> retention policy. <coughs> Is yeah, there so you, any had, discussion? so you had asked us to get feedback from Eli, uh, which we did, as well as Brooke, which we did, as well as the town, which I did. Um, Beth, you can speak to how the attorneys steered you, but basically they confirmed exactly what you were doing. Yeah. And the town advised me that they do not have a policy about records retention. <laughs> so those are those three follow-ups. Beyond that, I'll let Beth speak to what she did or didn't do. They all, except for Paish, they all referred us to the state archives, which is what we used in developing these. And we even used their template. The only um, uh, veering away that we did is in section six, where we actually stipulated that we would keep certain records longer than what the archives suggested that we keep them. And we did, or I did go back and add under section six, uh, number H about correspondence, because y'all had asked about that at the last meeting. Um, yeah. So that was why it was, it was highlighted because that was an ad? Correct. Okay, great. I, I had one comment and, and that was in a little one. I think contracts should be kept for the term of the contract plus three years. I mean, some contracts will be, you know, immediately executed, but for example, the um, H11 contract oh. is a 25 year contract. We shouldn't be tossing it after three years. Probably wouldn't be, but Okay, um, so I'm thinking we could change the wording to be we'll be paying for no less than three years beyond the termination of the contract. Would that suffice? Or completion of the contract, yeah. yeah. Completion or mm -hmm. the end of the contract? Well, it could be completion or termination yeah. okay. of, of the contract. Uh, I think you have to say that that's for contracts because the other things aren't mm -hmm. contracts. Okay. <laughs> okay i will add that in there but i think i have one i i support the policy as as written i just wanted to clarify in a couple of places that it seemed important to me it said no less than and so i thought rather than debating how we reword the wording spine but just the practice it would seem like mike for you and beth for you something like um you know basic budget budgets and reports that even though you don't need all the work papers and a lot of extraneous stuff there's a there's some basic <clears throat> history that'll be helpful to you as you try to look backwards to help inform looking forwards and so 
I would imagine where you say no less than on a budget that you'll keep, you know, you'll keep at least a picture of the budget that it was four years ago, five years ago, six years ago, you know, you'll hold on to that history, not because it's needed for legal reasons, but just for you doing your job, you know, to inform. Is that, is that what you meant by the no less than? Yeah, it, it's kind of, yeah, pretty much. It, yeah. It's just, it means a minimum of three years, but if, as we see, we need it more, like continuing uh, yeah. data, we can still keep yeah. it. Because if you got boxes of stuff and stuff from every month, you don't need to keep that. But you right, definitely okay. want a picture of, you know, one picture of the full year or something. Right. Yeah, wait, so it's up. Stuff like that, Roger, the budget, whatever. We have a cop. I have a copy of every budget we've ever had since I've been here. Um, yeah. And the whole motivation right. of, of this effort is really to get rid of the piles of documents in the basement that we don't yeah. have to have here. That's really what right. it's all about. And that's what it reads. That's good. You know, get rid of the boxes and boxes and just yes. don't get so overzealous that you wipe the history clean. <laughs> you don't know what it is. Right. Was. I mean, like, I have uh, three of those big, uh, wide four drawer filing cabinets full of all kinds of Joyce Bellavance documents that are, yeah, you know, that's over. It's settled. What, what are we doing with these? It's time for them to go. So, yeah, that and it's honestly stuff? more likely you'll find what you need if you get rid of all the stuff you don't need. Yeah, for sure. Okay. <clears throat> Could you give me an example of the records not outlined in four, five, or six that uh, would be disposed of at the discretion of of you guys? I mean, is is that just a, a, a catch-all, or do you have something in mind? It, it's a catch-all. Okay. It, it 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 more or less means that any records that are not identified by the state in their document in their uh, documentation or in their statutes or if we have not specifically identified it okay so i mean it, it seems Which we really couldn't actually we couldn't think of anything else that didn't hit one of those sections right right and so uh, where it says records not yet covered by a grs will not be destroyed and will be maintained by uh, HED at the discretion of general manager or controller. So, I, I mean, I, I, it seems like everything was covered looking at it, but maybe uh, change the, the wording to until uh, such records have, have been defined in a GRS or something. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm just uh, a little leery when there's something that's undefined. Although I'm sure you guys would use excellent judgment, uh, but if we're gonna have a pretty specific records management plan, then putting a discretionary clause in there just seems, I mean, it seems like the decision should be made when, uh, uh, a, when the records that aren't covered have been defined. Does that make any sense? It does, but I can say that in looking through what the state has defined in their regulations, I honestly could not think or find any records here that didn't fall in one of their already defined categories. Um, but I get? also feel like there may be things that come up that maybe they hadn't thought about. All right. Um, so can we get rid of the catch-all? And if and when we need a catch-all, can we bring it to the board? Is that clean way to do category. it? <laughs> oh, is that, a, is that a clean way to clean yeah, it up? Yeah. Great. So that way, yeah. that way I'm actually won't fine with the catch-all because I, so. I, think, I think this is defined, but I, I, I don't know how, how others feel. So what would you say, Lynn? I was okay with the catch-all, but if others aren't, we can we can take it out. If, What's everybody else think? I'm fine with it. It's kind of fine. Yep. Okay. Well, I'm 
You guys well, are coming. I better find out. I don't, I, I'm, I'm, we just need to have a decision one way or the other. And I apologize for eating. This is lunch. I'm, je I'm jealous. I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first thing I've eaten all day. I all think right. we should leave it in and keep going. Yeah, it looks like we don't even need a vote, so. Okay, well, we need a vote on the approving it on the whole um, policy. I move to adopt this policy as presented here as written. Um, without I, the change just, on contracts? Well, then someone else should make the motion and define the change. <clears throat> I'll make a motion. Um, I move that we accept the records retain retention policy as drafted with a modification that indicates in section 6A1 that contracts will be kept for three years after their expiration or termination or completion. A second that second. motion. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? You wrote so that down, Beth? I got it. Okay. Which takes us to the H11 mitigation modifications. Yeah, so the I, I emailed the maps out again late this afternoon in case anybody wanted to look at them, but the follow-up I had was from all of you to circle back with Eric and confirm that uh, he was okay with the plan that Dave and Mike and I had concluded on, and he was. Um, so I'm just looking for final approval from you all to move forward with that choice. So if you look, if anybody wants to look at the map, the, the, the original alternate three, and the final alternate three are slightly different. They're in the same area, but we chopped off kind of the southeast part of the parcel and moved it a little bit north to create more of a buffer for the waterway through there because we thought that would be something the ANR would like to protect the waterway more. Um, but other than that, it's the, it's the same area. But is that that's the map that you sent out today? The big map section, one page that has only the mitigation area on it, that's the one. It says alternate three on it. And then the map that had all the information on it had a little section that showed the original alternate three, which is not what I'm asking for. Since the map isn't in the packet, we need a way to define what it is that we're approving. That's that's it's it's in it's your still, inbox. It, it's in your no? inbox. Mike sent it right before the meeting. No, and you're that's right. Why I Lynn. was asking if that's the one that that, that <clears throat> you're talking about. But we can do the one that was provided at last month's meeting. If you want? It's the same but one. You, but but you said it's a. I'm confused. I thought you said it was it was revised from what was the last month's meeting. No, the original meeting that Mike and Dave and I had with all of you. Yeah. His mitigation area alternate three in that meeting was slightly changed to increase the waterway buffer area. And that's the map I presented to you all last month. That's the big map of the ones I emailed you today, same one. I just want, we just need to be clear what we're approving. Yep. It's not, I don't think there's, a, <laughs> is there a discussion about this in the meantime? I'm just trying to come up with a way to this is the one that says alternate three. I know. I just have to open the email, Mike. Yeah, no problem. Let's see. Um, oh, you know what? If that's the map, can you label it sure. as as the um, approved alternate or something sure. like that? And sure. then we can we can approve that, and that way it's clear what it was that we were approving. So I'm going to call it approve uh, alternate. Mitigation area for the H11.
maybe with today's date on it or something just to yeah i can do that and then that should be attached to the minutes so that we have a record of you of got it. it um is there a motion to approve that alternate I move, I move to, to approve, approve three. Go ahead, Roger. I move to approve uh, mitigation revision alternate three, as shown on the map, labeled as such. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. It passes. There is no opposition. Okay. So the next item is a report from Beth on the service improvement initiatives. Yes. So to give you an idea of what I've been looking into and discussing with Mike and um, four areas specifically. First and prime is the phone answering system, the message and making that more concise, making it more useful. So we've been, I've been working with some the rest of the office staff to make sure it still makes sense and just trying to make it so it's not so long and you don't get dropped off. And also there's a different message for weekends and holidays so that people know when we're closed and just to provide some more information, but still make it concise. So you're not sitting on the phone listening to a message for 10 minutes long before you can choose one option that you want. Um, and to go along with that um, is our card payments. And to make it more secure for our customers, the ultimate goal would be that we don't touch a card at all. So there's ways to work this with our current operating system and with a small extra piece. So um, SEDC has a product called AutoQ and it does many things, but one of the things it can do for us is automatically check credit card payments so that someone can call in to the auto queue system, they can get their account balance and they can make a payment. You're breaking up, Beth. Um, let me see if I can get closer. Does it help? Maybe if I talk I louder. I don't. Th I think it's your bandwidth. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe. Lynn, I think that was you. Maybe go off yeah. video. I heard her. Lynn, I think that was you. That was your end, Lynn. So, so Beth, I just want to I just uh, clarify. They can do it without the intervention of a human. They do it by hitting buttons on the phone. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So let me, yeah. let me, let me just give a little more information here. So when we uh, originally went to SCDC, I didn't want uh, to be dealing with people's credit card numbers over the phone. And I said, okay, if, one of peop if people want to make a credit card payment, they can do that mm -hmm. through the portal and we don't have to be responsible for losing their number or getting it into somebody else's hands or whatever else. That ran into hurdles because a select board ne member needed to make a payment uh, and couldn't do so with us because it was for a different service. It was for a cover service, which is also modified since then. But uh, so we did start taking credit cards over the phone as a transition to better serve the customer. Um, we didn't hear Mike. Yeah. Did other people hear Mike? Yes. yes. So it's me then. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go off video then. Okay, you want to you want me to start over, Lynn? It only takes a second. It just yeah, if you can do it quickly, yeah. please. Sorry. So I had originally uh, de decided for HED that we were not gonna manually process credit cards because I didn't want the ladies to have to deal with the risk nor the customers to potentially blame us for problems with their credit card. Uh, that morphed into us taking credit cards when we um, needed to accommodate uh, one of the select board members who had a problem and needed to get us a payment. And the only way she could do it in a timely fashion was through credit cards. So we changed the policy and accepted credit cards. And in these initiatives that Beth has tackled to find opportunities to improve uh, services based largely on feedback from the last couple of meetings from you all. Um, she identified this, what's a, the two number initial? Again, it's 
SEDCs, whatever it is. They're auto queue products. Auto queue, and it can all be done automatically. Uh, so the customer will have the same access as they did with us verbally and manually, but we will be not part of that and they can do it all automatically. So another component of this is to keep allowing for card security is there are new um, credit card reading devices that we can purchase through SEDC for in-office use so that customers who come in and want to pay, we still don't have to touch it. They just run their card through this device. And it is a device that actually encrypts all the data that is sent out um, to be approved. So there's no actual, you know, real data being transmitted. It's all encrypted. So those are two new devices that we would need to purchase um, for the front office. Um, if uh, just one second, so you're integrating the phone system with the software through. It's not so much the phone system as it is the auto queue system. And, and now it works with our current phone system in that when someone calls in, you will be able to press a number and it will then immediately transfer the call to the auto queue system. Okay. For their, okay. So the auto queue system is another line. Yes. In the phone system. Okay. Yes. Uh, but an encrypted, an encrypted secure line to boot. Nice. Yes. And even if so, and we will still technically have the capability in the office to accept credit cards. Like if someone calls and just absolutely doesn't want to use the phone system, because we will have customers like that. We're going to do all we can to encourage them to use the automatic system for their own security and their data security. But there will be those. So technically, we will still be able to do it manually for them if there's just no other way around it. But we want to push them as much as possible to the automated system. And if they're in the office, they will be using these new devices. So as much as possible, we are not touching any of their personal information, any of their financial information. Why, why not take the credit cards in the office? I mean... Oh, we're going to take them in the office. It's just these new devices that we as employees won't have to touch the device. The customer can swipe the card themselves on the new device, we won't be touching it. I think the question is why Why doesn't, Lynn wants to know why we don't wanna do it so that we have the number in our hands. Is that right, Lynn? Well, I'm, I'm asking really for two reasons. I mean, first of all, customers, <laughs> people are used to giving, you go into a store, you go into an office to pay, you give somebody your credit card. Um, it's, not, it's not a particularly unusual thing. The other thing, looking down the road, if, if we run into COVID or some other similar sort of issues down the road. Um, I know what we were doing at the bagel, because it used to be the customers swipe their own credit cards. We stopped that because we didn't want so many people touching the machine. Um, and, and so I just wonder what the rationale for having, you know, for changing the machine. Because the other thing that strikes me is if somebody has to give their card, they, there's an opportunity to have some dialogue to say, hello, how's your day? It, it's maybe a little more personal. We're, we're still gonna be there yeah. at the counter with them. Okay. Yes, there's still gonna be the personal interaction if they come in the office. Absolutely. So it's just who's sticking the card in the reader. Yes. Or, it's presumably or not a, I hope it's not a swipe. It can, they can go either way. It can be a swipe or a touch. Um, so that, those are the things that we're looking at as far as customers uh, and their security uh, of their personal private, of their, I can't remember the exact term for it, but don't know what I'm talking about. Um, another thing that is coming along is SEDs. What, when can I say I the portal, can I ask one yeah. more credit card question? Yeah. Um, so do is SEDC our credit card processor? Yes. So how much do we pay them? I would have to look at it's a percentage, but I would have yeah. to look someone say something. I've, I've got a yeah, I think it's like two two point two five percent, Lynn. I can't remember, but those dollars that's very high. That's very high. It might not even be that. I, I I remember you asking this question when we were doing it before. And when I got you the information, you were okay with it. So it must not be 2.25. But um, 
whatever those costs are, they are fully approved by the PUC to go into rates in the future. So whatever. yeah, no, I know that, but I, I, I just don't see charging, you know, it, I think we're gonna see more and more credit card payments over time. And if, if, if we're paying, if our customers are paying a two or two and a quarter percent premium, that's, that's a lot of money over our whole rate base. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, and, and, we got and, some and, municipal special rate on it, I don't, but I don't remember what it was. I, anyway, I, it I, I, just want, I just wonder if there is, I understand the advantages of having SEDC integration, um, but I just wonder if, if, if there's a big savings, it may be worth thinking about going a different route. That's well, we originally, I had it set up originally so that the card holder, the, pay, the customer paid that fee. And you spanked me over that and we set it up the way it is now because you didn't like I didn't it. Thank you, but uh, no, I mean, we shouldn't, we, but, but, but we need, again, if there's a way to, to save on that, I, I, it, it's worth looking. I mean, what's 1% yeah, well, of that? Out of our revenue, I, I can't do. I should. I've got Six, the numbers here. Sixty thousand bucks, sixty-five thousand yeah. bucks. Yeah, I mean that's that's real money. Yeah, and and, and the savings oh, might be on that order. And that's about oh, what Beth, the uh, Beth. Can you get those percentages for us? Yeah. We can discuss yeah. this more next month. I will get that. Anyway, so sorry about that's that. Right. And that's I'm all right. Um. So associated with our website is a link that says. Uh, I think it says pay your bill now. At that point, it goes to our SEDC software and they control it from that point on. That is totally being revamped. We are in the process of SEDC is changing it for all their customers. It is much slicker. It's much more easy to manage. So we're going to combine that new piece when we launch our new website. Um, and then the last thing we're looking at is getting an app. An, an app that actually says HEB on it, or Hardwick Electric, that customers can download on their phones. So it will make it easier for them to have access just on their phone. Um, you know, to, it'll go straight to us as opposed to getting on their phone, going to a browser, going to our website, and then logging in. It'll be directly, and SEDC providers will be providing that as well. I have a related question. Is I, don't, I didn't see it. I just I checked the website, but I didn't see uh, a, a way that we could just get uh, emailed um, emailed uh, invoices, you know, uh, monthly statements as opposed to mailed statements. Because I saw the the uh, postage bill. You know, there's like a twenty five thousand dollar line item for postage, which I assume is for mailing out the mailing out the bills. Yeah. So you know, over time, that could definitely add up. Just I mean, I'd prefer to not have a paper copy. I mean, I, I get it. I pay pay it right away online when I get the notice, and then and I just toss the paper copy without even we, opening. We do try. We do offer it, and we do try to promote it. Once okay. we get right. the new, once we get the new website and the portal, customers can sign up for the themselves. Okay. For the e billing. Cool. That's the kind of thing we should be advertising, though. You know, we, we, you know, we should, we should, we shouldn't hide our light under a bushel basket, and we. Should. It could be that could be people signing up for, um, uh, you know, notices from Hardwick Electric, so they just get it in their email. Well, for example. we save money. Maybe maybe we give people, you know, a couple of free LED bulbs if they sign up for email. You know, but but there no. are ways of doing this that maybe people will. I, I've warmer seen that yeah, we would have to make sure we would have to make sure that um, we have the correct email addresses for everybody. But I have seen promotions like call us to um, make to verify your phone number and email address and sign up for um, the e billing or e delinquents and your name goes in a pot for a twenty five dollar bill credit or something like that. Yeah, I like that. I've seen that in lots of places. Write that down. <laughs> Guerrilla marketing. <laughs> I like getting snail mail. 
Yeah, I, I think a lot of people do like it. I have well, we book. also, there's also the ability, you can get both an email and snail mail if you want both. I have my bill paid automatically anyway, so it doesn't make that Those much. are the best kind. Those are the kind we like. <laughs> Those are the main areas that I was going to cover as far as uh, customer service initiatives that we're, we're not just looking at them. I'm actually studying and researching and seeing what the best options be for, not just for us, but for our customers as well, to make it easier on them. Taking away impediments to giving you money. <laughs> exactly. We want to make it as easy as possible. As, as we implement these things, it would strike me that if if Mike or Beth, if either one of you, because I think either one of you would be a logical person to, to do it, were on Front Porch Forum in the towns that we serve, particularly in Hardwick, but I think even in some of the other towns, you're making a face that, but. I don't like it. <laughs> I, I, I don't either. Opinion okay. noted. <laughs> uh, well. The suggestion was simply that when some of these things are implemented, if we just put in, you know, an announcement in Front Porch Forum, that that's there. Um, similar to the efficiency things that were sticking in people's um, bills. Yeah, some of us who are on auto pay don't open our bills and wouldn't see that. Yeah. Um, but if it's on Front Porch Forum, do, do we have a list of contacts in each of the service area towns that would have an account that would be willing to put it in or uh, can? No, Hardwick it has to come from Hardwick Electric. It has okay, to so. Stella Hardwick Electric Le does it, Morrisville, does, they, they, other, others do it. Okay, so you just, it's basically an ad uh, is what it would be. It, no, the it would go area. in as an announcement. An ad is paid. This would be just as an announcement. Right, but generally you can only be, you know, you get an account for your, your particular town you can you can there are ways to do it they can okay no it's a great idea i mean i look at it every day you know <laughs> whether they're interesting or not i never look at it so no global so solution that's all i'm saying there's two ends of the spectrum there. right right but you know it's like there's no global solution so I think the people that do look at it love it. And I, I mean, you you telling me that you look at it every day tells me proves that really. Yeah. I mean, you look at it because you enjoy it, not because you know. I, I think so. I'm, I'm, I think a lot of the people who look at it because there winds up being topical discussions about what's going on in towns tend to be some of the more vocal <coughs> people. And I yeah. think it would be. You, you, you influencers. <laughs> did you hit? Did you hit the uh, app, Beth? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I missed it. I did. So, I mean, as far as that goes, you know, what about so social media? You know, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, all those accounts just having the same thing show up. You know, yeah, I know people. Are, our website developer um, is really pushing the Facebook and Twitter stuff. And I don't think we're ready to go there yet. Uh, and I think Beth agrees with me on that, but it's, it's certainly time intensive. Keeping yeah. Up with stuff. So yeah. We're, we're looking at it as part of that package. And I, and I think what we'll have them do is do the legwork to set the site up to accommodate those links in the future but they won't be part of this package for April 15th. Um, Beth, did you have anything else on service improvements? No, ma'am. Okay, then we go to the monthly financial report. Bad news. Must be the worst month in a long time. 
Yeah, definitely. So it looks like 12.3 cents for a kilowatt hour average for the purchase power. Yeah, with so the actual power supply cost was 11.8 and 11.5. I can't really read this that well. So, whatever it was above that would have been the BEPSA cost. So, yeah, that sounds right. Okay. Yeah, I just divided it by the, the uh, further down the total. Uh, oh, yeah, right there. Yep. So I was going to have Sean join us to explain the perfect storm we hit, but I figured I, I tried to write it up enough to give you the highlights. Yeah, I think we got it from your, yeah. your write-up was pretty clear. So it, it didn't, uh, I mean, you know, of course it's all up in the air now, but uh, talk about um, power, uh, power cost trends. I know we have long term the long term contracts, but you know if, if the coverage, for whatever reason, uh, continues to be that far off. I mean, the long term trends seem, especially with you know volatile politics, seems to be going up quite a bit. Well, the the increased load for the cold weather is what caught us off guard, and the the as far as long term contracts, the one that we kind of have hanging in the wind that I've mentioned a few times is the second half of the Seabrook contract that we need to replace. And that remains uh, in a very significant uh, limbo for us um, because if we replace that contract now before the legislature decides whether or not Nuke is gonna be renewable, we could really be kicking ourselves in the backside. Um, so we're, we're waiting patiently for them to make that decision. And we, until they do, we have more, you know, every month that's at higher risk going into the market, uh, after the end of this year. So we really need to figure out how to pull that trigger. We really need the legislature to rule on that. So that we can, know can, which way can, to go. can you send us the, the, uh, the specific legislation that, that addresses that? Because I mean, sure. I would definitely like to follow that up with you know, legislators. Are we, doing, are we doing anything to encourage the legislature to treat nukes as renewable? Yes, we have staff at VEPSA and we have a lobbying agency through VEPSA pushing that. And many of the general managers, including myself, have written our representatives and senators letters pushing for that. Okay, if you, if you sent information to us i mean we can all send sure letters, yeah but, i can do that but i think i think the other question is again this is something that i suspect that the general public is not aware of now there are some people who are anti-nuke on principle and you know they're they're the ones who are going to be pushing for and they can be very vocal yeah um but again this may be something that we can educate customers about so that people you know, if, if especially if FEPSA has some estimate of what this is, would you know, may cost customers if if it's not included in renewables. Um, would this be something worth having a topic and some time on it at the next meeting with Sean, so he can get you the? I guess the question um, is, is the next meeting too late? Yeah, too late. Yeah. Oh no, I don't think so. No. But I'll find out. So this uh, vote is going to be at the end of the, these vote or votes are going to be end at the end of the session. I mean, I mean I'm not that's sure. Be... That's I'll, I'll find that out okay. and I'll include the legislation and get it to all of you. But if there's an, you know, if there's an opportunity there. Um, yeah, the more feedback then, we get in favor, the better for us. That that's. Um, Maybe saving our customers a significant amount of money. Absolutely. And, 
And I, I agree with you about educating the public one, but I mean, personally, I found it to be uh, uh, a fairly fraught topic. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> and, I'm you know, and, and believe, believe me, I've been working in the industry since 1978. I am fully aware of how fraught it is. Oh yeah, yeah, but, I but, remember. But, <laughs> but we have some customer, I think, I think people may not have much of an idea of what it's costing them. And this is not a nuke that's in their backyard. Um, and that's a it, good idea, tying it to cost. And and so um, it's 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 a thought. That's all. Um, now with the the uh, second half of the contract that we didn't replace, um, we did take a look at replacing that a year ago. And I believe we did a presentation with all of you on that. And as I recall, the, uh, with the rec credits included, it's four cent power. If they're not included, it's eight and nine cent power. So. But eight or nine cents is still not 11 cents. All right. right? Oh, I agree. And it's base load and it's base load. Yeah. And it's not it's not oil and it's not gas and right. so so are the uh, are the available contracts uh, is the available output getting sold right now is that going to be gone and will it not be available if we wait? Uh, no, I don't think so. They were very uh, interested in doing business with us last year, and. I don't know that they, I think they have surplus power as it is. And they're, they're a primarily uh, long shot, you know, lengthy contracts. They're not much in the spot market. So I think if we went back to the table with them, we'd be sitting near where we were last year. The issue is how long do we have? Yes. Or it's hard to predict. Uh, you don't have I'll, to convince I'll, I'll me. I'll be a little bit of Pollyanna and say that for as cold a January as it was, the the price of purchase power was not nearly as bad as it could have been. Could have been Texas. That's, that's true. So. <laughs> you know my solar. Your dog agrees. <laughs> My solar created almost nothing in January. Yeah, mine too. I go out and, and brush mine off. It was, you get some pretty good days. Hey, is yours on the roof, Nat? Yeah, I can't reach it. Yeah. I say nothing. Mine did something, but it isn't like it cranks out in the summer. That's for sure. No. Is there any other discussion on the monthly financial report? One thing I'll share on that is uh, one of the follow-ups we had from you all last month. I have a couple of them. Here, was the trans uh, trying to give you more transparency on the visa bill that was just a visa bill payment mm -hmm. and Beth included all the receipts from my yeah that was great yeah, yeah. Um, yeah Beth your your hand notations throughout not really just cool. on the visa but throughout are are really good you know because I think it, it 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 I think it shows the two of you have the oversight and understanding okay it was pizza and the reason we were buying pizza is because we were doing the physical inventory and it right. just all flows and makes us comfortable because we can see you, you know what the money was going to. And um, when we look at the stuff without that, it's damn hard. Yeah, it's it. before I saw the receipts with your notations, I don't know what the heck is that? Yeah, so well, I, hope that, record, I hope it's not, I hope it doesn't feel like a waste of time to you because on the receiving no, end. No, no, uh, no. In fact, those receipts have got those descriptions on them before we right. ever pay them. Great. And, we do this every month with the visa bill. 
Yeah. Um, and even bills from the hardware store, anywhere where, where there's yeah. multiple purchases, we have individual receipts for everything. Good. And in our, I think all of our experiences, if, if you're going to start creeping into a situation of, of embezzlement, it, it could very likely be that sort of thing. You know, it can start mm -hmm. small. We lost you, Roger. Okay, other people lost them too. So it's not, I've got a new fiber system with 50 megs. I shouldn't be having. Roger's, Roger's holding his breath. Yeah. <laughs> Roger's frozen. Well, let's let him jump he back. May not hear, he may not hear us. If you, if you, if you cut your video, it'd probably be better. Well, I think what he was saying is, Beth, you've done a great job. This is <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I didn't do all of this. The staff did Well, the great staff. I just showed it to you. <laughs> okay, it looks like Roger's trying to jump back in. So hang on a second. Oh, he's, we've lost him all together. Yeah. So in part of, just looking at uh, on page 9, 142.01, the accounts receivable. That, that's largely because of the, the cold January. I mean, that increase. Yeah. Seems like a pretty a big of, increase. Yeah, the purchase power is in there. Yeah. So the other, the I'm other. Saying, not purchase power, sales. Right. The other follow up I had, and I don't remember who asked it, but somebody asked me last month uh, how liquid the Velco stock is. And. Yeah. It's liquid only uh, back to Velco. So the only person we can sell it to is Velco. And the, what they pay us is whatever we paid for it. So if we bought it oh, really? for a dollar, then we can sell it back to them for a dollar. But we're better, <laughs> we're better off keeping the investment because the interest. <laughs> 10 to 11 percent interest. It's it's a pretty darn good deal. So, but, so that's that's his its liquidity. It was so we of, carry it. So we carry it. We mark it at the inflated level. So if we if we were to liquidate it, we wouldn't get what we're showing on our balance sheet. That's correct. Okay, that's really. <laughs> He's stunned. Oh, there he goes. You're back. Roger, you froze. It would you we you, we got part of your sentence. Yeah, what I was saying is that what's shown on the balance sheet is is. It is a value that's higher than what we could get if we liquidated it. If we went back to Velco and said, take it back, give us the money, it wouldn't be as much money as we're showing. No, right? it'd be, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be, be the same just... money that we paid for it. But it wouldn't be yeah. what what we show on the balance sheet. Is that the inflated value, the current mark, quote unquote market value? Or is that the, the amount we paid for it in total? <clears throat> I thought it was. Wait I'm not positive, Roger. Does it should yeah, we might want to just look at that. Yeah, well, we is, can is, the balance, is the balance sheet. That would be a I good, mean, on, I think. On physical plant, follow, the balance Mike. sheet would be the depreciated value of, of the assets. So that wouldn't be current. No, it's not depre. That's not something that would depreciate. That's an appreciating no, asset. No, no, I know, so I, know I know, I know it wouldn't. Be, I, yeah. I know I, I just didn't know that we're doing FMV on 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 the assets or or what we paid for them. Well, yeah, it's, it's let's it's find out. Money. I'll find out. I don't propose to necessarily change it, but we should all know because we might get into a pinch sometime where we really need to spend a bunch of money on something, and before we borrow, we'd ask the question of do we liquidate it, and so knowing what it's worth is. It's a good thing. Yeah. I get, got another question, question related to Velco. Uh, the returns, I mean, looking at the, the revenue, the dividends from Velco, they're pretty high. And are, are there any statutory limitations? I mean, for, for uh, you know, for being this public entity, uh, are there any limitations on, on dividend? I mean, it seems like there would be a limitation uh, if there was excess income 
that it would go back to either uh, infrastructure investment or uh, into reducing rates, you know, transmission rates, for example. So I, I'm just curious about, I mean, it's a high return. And uh, it just seemed unreasonably high for that kind of public entity. Uh, I didn't know if there are any, you know, uh, limitations on, on what it could earn. Is it a public entity? Why don't we give Why don't we give Mike the chance? Delco oh, okay. private. It is private. Okay. So, so it's it's still a it's a it's private it's private, but it's a regulated monopoly. I mean, they're the ones they're the ones providing just uh, grid services in in Vermont. Correct. Vermont only. Yep. Vince, and even with a regulated entity, typically if revenue goes up unless a, the utility goes in and files for a rate reduction, it would be a very rare situation where customers would be coming in and saying file for, you know, the rates are too high and should be reduced. Um, because even to do that, you have to do a full on rate case. So mm -hmm. it, what, what happens when the revenues are higher is it just winds up delaying when you go in for a rate increase, which is exactly what's happened with Harbrook Electric. So there, there's no there's no trigger, for example. There's no there's no like an audit of annual audit with oversight or something. That's no, interesting. No. Well, the other thing that's interesting is if the value is what we paid for it, not what we're look, we've uh, escalated it to. Our return investment is almost a level up in terms of percentage. Because if we paid half of what it's now valued and we're getting 10% interest, we're really getting 20% interest on in what the value of that is, which is amazing. Right, correct. It's a big <laughs> lose to let it go, yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I'd buy it from you guys for a buck 50. <laughs> <laughs> Michael wants to buy it all anyway. I made that offer last week. <laughs> so, uh, Beth, I, I was going to ask you a question. I know I briefly mentioned this last time, but is there a possibility we could get a sort of a long-term graph of, of uh, accumulated um, liabilities in like the vacation, sick pay, the, uh, the um, uh, retirement contributions? Uh, it, it, because it is, it's, it can end up like uh, well, just carrying that much liability can I, you know? It's nice to know how much how much you were ex how much exposure Hardwick Electric has in total that kind of accumulated liability. Are you trying to get to unfunded liabilities, Vince? Yeah, I guess uh, unfunded liabilities. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's always a good question to ask if it if it's consequential. I don't know. It's a pretty small pool, but. It's a good thing to know. Well, the the what was it? the retirement? I can't remember what it was. Uh, it's five hundred fifty thousand right now, mm -hmm. and vacation and sick pay. I guess which I guess that's is that considered unfunded? I don't know. Well, it depends what your policy is. How long you carry it? Like if you let people build it up over thirty years and then they can cash out. Right. Some huge lump sum, then it's then it's consequential. If it's just a year to year thing, and there and also there are the uh, General Accounting Standards Board. They have policies on how much you have to book as well. Um, it it so it works in combination with what the company policy is, as well as what the Accounting Standards Board say you have to uh, put on the books. Okay. If Vince, to, to, to sort of build on your question, if Beth, what you found is that we had pretty significant unfunded liabilities, let's just say in the retirement area, I'd be really interested in pushing that because one of the things that drives me as a, just an average citizen and taxpayer absolutely crazy is how government entities can make retirement commitments and not fund them as they go. And then they just explode later on some later generation. So I'd love to know, Vince, I think, you know, where, if we are guilty of that, 
and then what the regs say about us. And I'd be one voice saying, don't play that game, you know, pay as you go. If you're making commitments to people, accrue to meet them, don't just pass them along to some future. I mean, yeah, personally, I mean, it was something that I was real sensitive to in our business and that just made sure that it was funded because I would look back and these things just accumulate, you know, they're like these yeah. legacy, <laughs> these legacy uh, liabilities, you know, pretty soon it's real money. So yeah, the one, in the one we thing, did, uh, we wouldn't let people, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mike. No, you go. We wouldn't let people accumulate more than two years worth of vacation. We pay them for it at the end of the year just to get it off the books or they'd have to use it, but we wouldn't let people just continually, you'd have people accumulating 26, 30 weeks of vacation, which yeah. is just a killer. You can't let that yeah. happen. Yeah, I mean, it's right. like Kodak, for example. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've- so It sounds our, like we've, we, we're probably of similar minds on this. So I think what we need is, we just need Beth and Mike just to sort of look into it, see what the current state is. All right, is this 550 like a rolling yeah. 550? So we, we do we do have vacation limitations and rollover limitations to control those liabilities. The one that pops into my mind that is not funded that can hit us out of the blue is if Brian were to retire, for example, you know, he gets half of his bank sick time, uh, all his vacation, if, and if everything was to max out for him and the calendar landed right, it's probably forty to $50,000 we got to write him a check for. So Now, we I mean, have I, the liability books. It's just a matter of writing a check. Right, we but have we don't the fund liability it. on the books. Right. You can give it to him in Velcro stock. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we don't, I mean, we don't have a, a piggy bank holding that money that we, we right. account for. So if, it, if he decided to retire, that's a hit to us that is not presently planned or funded well that's really good to keep in mind i remember you said that once before and the one thing's for sure it isn't going to be that many years before brian retires so exactly yeah. that check's going to have to be written pretty soon yeah, yeah. so knowing and what it is is key yeah and that's part of what the auditors look at too um that we've got on the books what our policy says especially as far as vacation and sick pay and i'm actually looking at that every month make sure the books reflect those lines so the, appropriately. Yeah, so the problem is, is going from a balance sheet line item to a real <laughs> use of cash. Right. You know, and right. yeah, it's because we're, it's not, it's immaterial right now because we have big cash balances, but. But when it turns into a cash flow. Yeah. So I think you got to figure out a way to keep that in front of us so we don't think we have more cash than we really might. Yeah. I think we got to get going. Where do you want to go? Any other? Farther on the agenda, we got four or five items still to go. We're one hour in. Yeah. I'm a clock. Uh, manager. Next item is the are there any other questions on the monthly financial report? Oh, give me like two seconds here. Okay, so this is kind of a general question. Just seeing the, the invoices on, and the maintenance and operation expenses at the, at the dam. I didn't have time to do like a calculation for income based on average annual production. But uh, I mean, ha have any calculations been made like, uh, you know, upgrades, repairs, just m and stuff on the dam versus income? And the last, the last time I looked at, last time the board of commissioners asked me that, I ran the numbers and I think we were coming out 120,000 plus a little in the good. That was so the, after all expenses, et cetera, we were still six figures to the good. Yeah, and that was with the Rex. Uh, no Rex. We don't have Rex. Oh, uh, no? No, well, we have a very few. No, we don't because we're behind the meter load reducer now. We okay. used to, uh, we used to get some Rhode Island wrecks uh, when we were in front of the meter and part of the ISO equation, but they were they were nothing. They were a penny or two, okay. a penny I think a kilowatt hour, and we were much better off. We shifted in shifted that facility in the market over to a load reducer, which saved us significantly more money a year. 
So, so the, the MNO, I mean, I could see that over time, just, I know the, those major repairs have been made, but uh, are there any other repairs? Right, but like, so the repair we made last year was 135,000 bucks, but it's good for 60 years. I mean, when you okay. look at, yeah. So it's really okay. nothing. Yeah. So just looking at the cycles of various potential failures or uh, repair, ne necessary repairs. Those... Things that have, the things I have lined up and the things that I've done since I've been here have all been long overdue, neglected. So Cool. So it's going to be even better return. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, oh, yeah. I just already asked about the email. So I just, I got a bunch of notes here. I'm just going to rattle them off to make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, legislative information on nuclear being renewable. Uh, what the actual legislation is, get that to all of you. Uh, get details on what an actual Delco stock sale back would really happen, what actually transpires. And a follow up on known unfunded liabilities is that all i had well also knowing what what the hmm. basis for the value of the velco stock is is it a fair market value or is it what we paid for it yeah that's <laughs> it's whatever else? we pay it's whatever we paid for it that they did tell me Okay. So if we bought 10 shares for $10 and we want to sell it back, they're going to give us $10. No, no, no. no I, we understand that. The question okay. is in the balance sheet, the, the figure that's gotcha. there for it, what is that number based on? Gotcha. Beth, I'm going to hit you with that one. So you got it, right? Good. I think it'll be but I'm going to verify it first. Okay. Okay, so the next item is the general manager's report. Are there any questions, comments? Who's Joe Sullivan? Joe Sullivan works for the internet development company. That oh, okay. No, no relative to me, never seen him before in my life, <laughs> other than via Zoom. No, no conflict. No. What, what company are we using? Uh, Vermont Web Marketing. The the sewer system stuff. I, I don't know if you who's in charge of ARPA funding and stuff, but it's like would be a perfect application. I don't know if that's available or not. I mean, but there's specifically sewer system upgrades and water system supply stuff are specifically addressed and and. Uh, in uh, the ARPA funding guidelines. I mean, it's, it's a lot of money and, and you know, it's just basically a matter of saying we need this money for this. So if I go like to an ARPA funding website or something, I can look into this or? Actually the, the town, uh, town of Hardwick has discretionary funds uh, there's still some limits, but I think, what's the population of Hardwick? About 3,000. 3,000. So they, they actually, they're, they get close to a million dollars. So they'd be right at the threshold of auditing. But uh, they have a million dollars. I don't know how much they spent. Uh, but, uh, you right, know. So why, why would they spend it on a sewer line serving only our warehouse? <clears throat> I don't think they would. They'd, they'd spend it on upgrading right. a line that serves a neighborhood or something. Sure, they, they, they but, might, but you don't know. There's, there's, there's a huge amount of work that needs to be done on the water treatment plant in yep. Hardwick. Yep. I, 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 I think this is a small amount relative to our budget. Um, and I, I think that trying to draw the select board into this when there are some big issues in the town um, that this one is probably okay. Wrong. You you have your finger on the the political I pulse agree. of Hardwick more than I do. And the select board is the deciding group, right? Okay, so you know, uh, yeah. If, all things all things considered, I couldn't be happier to be getting into the municipal system for twenty five grand. I, I think it's awesome. So yeah. Well, yeah. You know, I'm just saying it, it's it's out there. There's a lot of funding, and there's more funding. 
coming from the state as we Mike, speak. Mike, why don't you check with 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 Dave Upson? Yeah, I can check and just ask him. And if they're, you know, if this can be part of what the town is is doing, great. And if not, it's not something to argue about. No, it doesn't, never never hurts to ask. <laughs> Mike, what are these? You you mentioned a new company or two that is going to be a big user in the future. Can you say who? Uh, yeah, two. The two are going to be uh, Clean Cannabis. I've been talking to you about them. Right. They're the total 15. total indoor uh, plant grow process and sell in the same facility. And then the other one is a new. Uh, car wash next to the Ford dealership that is going to be owned by the Ford dealership. And that's where they're putting in all their level three car chargers that they're going to have to charge their 200 Ford electric pickup trucks that are coming in here in the next two months. And from what I understand, those trucks need to be charged after so many days, whether they've been discharged or not and they are going to end up being a big user and a big customer and, I, and i've explained this all to them and the numbers and they're like that's fine whatever the bill is we're good with it do we need to be having a, a is this is this a facility that's going to be available 24 7 or is it just during the day is this going to affect our peak potentially and do we need to be having um a separate rate for, for level three chargers. Yeah, I, uh, you know as much as me as far as what they're, what they're actually gonna do when, I mean, they're planning on having trucks plugged into this thing, these charge stations. They're gonna do three level three charge stations and they have 200 vehicles they're gonna have to rotate through there regularly. Uh, did they indicate that they wanna have full charge availability all the time or are they open to like demand response at all? Oh, uh, we, uh, they originally, in one of the original meetings with them, they discussed, well, you know, Green Mountain Power has this time of use rate and X, Y, Z, one, two, three. And I said, well, we don't have that yet. Could be coming down the road, but let me look at the comparison and the fees they were paying on their installation in St. Johnsbury were almost the same as what they'll be paying with us without the time of use benefit because they don't care about the time of use. They charge them whenever they want to charge them. So at some time of, of the day, they're paying 30 cents a kilowatt hour to charge a truck. Well, we only charge 17 cents. So in the long run, the big, the big picture, uh, what a GMP bill is and what ours would be in a comparable uh, use is very close to the same. So if they have 10 level three chargers on June 29th at 5 p.m. at the... Uh... ISO New England peak, the amount that we make back over the course of the year with you know the higher rates, demand rates, would that be the same amount? I mean, I know that's kind of a- Yeah, I, I don't know. You know I know, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, oh yeah, if yeah. they had 10 of them, I think we'd be, we'd have to upgrade the circuit from the substation. Right. Are they on a demand charge right now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You said they were gonna have three. Yep, three of them, and uh, when they're fully operational, uh, they'll be drawing over 300,000 watts just in charging. <laughs> That's a lot. I mean, uh, our, our biggest customer right now is another hemp facility, and they only use about 230,000. So this will be, this will be this more than them. Yeah. Lamoil Ford. Yep. And you say they're going to have a car wash also? Yep. Public, as far as you know? No. Public, yes. But their charging systems are going on the back of that building because their existing electrical system in the dealership is not big enough to handle this new load. Okay. They get like uh, big transformers. Oh, yeah. yeah. 100 kVA, yeah, these are big. Yeah. And we can, if you get muddy riding your bike on the bike path, you can pull right into the car wash, spray it off. Uh, 
Well, I had one. I had one question. It's a small question. I noticed at the, the bottom of the page. I was talking about the operating statement for January, and I'd forgotten this when we were talking about that. It it said that you know it has vacation pay broken out separately, mm -hmm. but I mean, it, it, people are being paid their salary. It's not a separate. Why do we break it? I I understand why we may need to break it out for the FERC accounts, but it doesn't really matter whether somebody is being paid while they're on vacation or whether they're being paid when they're in, in, in the office. Yeah, no, it's more a, the, the reason of bringing it up is the timing, uh, Lynn, because it, it was the time of year where people have to use their time. It's back to the control of not people, not allowing uh, staff to build up huge banks of time off. Okay. So at that time of year, it's like, oh, I got to use these six days or I'm going to lose them. And so that's why that number was escalated for the month. And that's all we were highlighting. I see, okay. But I get a quick question about VEPSA outside services, which is gonna lead me to another question, but what are those, that's, these are services that were in addition to their normal monthly services? Yes. Okay. And for- So maybe uh, one of them would be like, if uh, Steve Farman, contacts their attorney bill ellis and says hey i need to talk to you about xyz one two three and he racks up a bill of a thousand dollars on behalf of the bepsa members we're responsible for 10 percent of that cost okay so the uh those congressionally designated um spending the million bucks fepsa got I, I haven't looked at what it was for but i was thinking that, what you, do you have what was I don't have for? I don't have the foggiest idea what you're talking about. Okay, well, uh, from Sanders' office, there was a request made by Vepsa for money, very specific, but I haven't looked at it. Oh, and that's uh, yeah, that I know what that is. That's a okay. we got approval, or it's in. The, I don't know if it's finally approved, but what you're talking is. about is a revolving. Bucks. It's a revolving loan fund, so we got a bunch of money to put into a fund that we can actually Vepsa can actually loan out to. Uh, our customers to do projects. It's all part of the renewable energy standard. Okay. That's what it's for. Okay. Now, also on a different huh. note, we um, got 25% funding of the AMI project approved in the House. Now it's going to the Senate. So cross your fingers. Hopefully we'll get that. And you got 90,000 in VLite funding. I was going to ask you about Charger for, well, we can talk about it tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else? I, I have one other thing on the general manager's report. I don't know if anyone else has anything. It's on um, page two of, of GM1. I noticed that, that uh, the top line says it's almost IRP time again. Yeah. And um, not for us, though. Oh, okay. Right, they have they have thirteen of them they have to do. So, the first so this, ones are. This coming. is not. This won't impact our IRP. No. Um, we're in the we're in the third group. So okay. We're three years out from them. The other the other thing, um, the discussion of the Wheeling tariff, is that going to be a a, a FERC, that'll be a FERC tariff, right? Uh, yeah, it's transmission. So how it works, and I don't know. Well, is it, it I mean, because FERC defines transmission on the basis of voltage. So I didn't know if this was going to be a FERC tariff or a PUC tariff. And I just wondered what. Yeah, I know. I think you're exactly correct. It's not going to be a transmission. It's going to be a distribution tariff <laughs> solely for standard offer project capacity, which is all within the state of Vermont. So it doesn't matter that it's all if it was a, if it was at transmission voltage and it's it would it's still not be 13 right. whatever it okay. is so it's PUC. I was, that was just a matter of curiosity yeah no. so the one i think vec yeah vecs is for distribution and it's approved by the puc then. so okay. ours would be the same as that okay so, so we'll get about fifty four thousand dollars a year your estimate yep and that's just bonus it's, there's there's no expense that's, we for us. we get that because this solar developer will be utilizing our system to make money and we otherwise get no compensation for them using our system 
That's now, what it's gonna all be, about. And, and he's going to sell that power to whomever he wants to. He sells that power into the standard offer project, which takes all the standard offer energy in all of Vermont, and each utility in the state has to buy their uh, load ratio share of that power. So he's so, not he's not necessarily cannibalizing all of our uh, customers. Not a bit. Not a bit. We buy we buy very 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 little of that power. Right. That's a good deal. Yeah, with the tariff in place, it's a great good news. Deal. So if the other, there's another 2.2 megawatt project brewing, uh, potentially going into Wolcott. So that would be another one. Uh, that would be another 54,000 bucks, be the same, same but, scenario. So I wonder if the developer had actually anticipated that at all. I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm just curious. Well, would it, would I, it, would it be only 54 or would it be more? I mean, if, it, if, if, we, if we can, if we've already accounted for the 600 that we're using on the first project, isn't everything excess on the second one? Right. So this one, this one would be even more. You're right. Because it wouldn't get reduced. Huh. And I think also uh, the Gebby digester can go into that same tariff because they've been uh, pushing, they have 150 kW max methane digester there, but that's another, you know, what's that per kilowatt month? That would just be another adder in there. But Not much, the, but it's something. So is the standard offer, uh, uh, can they change the, 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 the type of uh, sale contract uh, for selling power? I mean, can, can they turn around and say, well, instead of paying you that money, it's going to be better for us if we sell it to you for whatever, eight cents a kilowatt hour. No, the standard offer is, is an auction system, Vince. So okay. if all seven of us wanted to go build a 2.2 megawatt project uh, and the PUC said, yep, we're going to do two projects this year, we all have to bid into an auction at a set price for 20, 20 or 20, I think it's a 20 year contract they signed. And if we all bid and we all had good proposals, and they evaluated them all, then the two lowest bidders would probably get the project. But it's a long-term contract, Vince. Yes. So you, it it right. doesn't get reopened. Right, okay. Anything else on the general manager's report? If not, that takes us to the budget. <clears throat> are, there, are there any questions, comments? Hang on. Oh, I, I, well, while people are flipping pages, I had one on A and G. If I did my math correct, the proposed budget is 2.6% over 2021. But without going into detail, some things that we're contemplating that we will take up in executive session would be substantially more than that. I think we're still, we'd still have a net surplus, we'd still have a surplus, but it would be a smaller surplus. Yeah, I think the difference would be, actually I can tell you what the difference would be. Um, Roughly 85,000. Yeah, that's, that was my calculation. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Mike, since I, I was the cranky one about the, uh, the budget last time, I just want to thank you. This is a this is uh, fabulous. It addresses every question that I had and, and many I did wasn't smart enough to have. So I'm I'm um, I'm a hundred percent comfortable with where you put it now. Now the question is as you spread that across the 12 months of the year, one of those months being locked in and the financial statements, the other done but not yet reported. How are you going to do it? Because like the January whopper of a negative, you, you know, if we're just approving the budget now, you ought to put January in and it's actual. Yeah. I would, normally so, that's what you do. Like, you know, so you don't, I mean, yeah. 
That's the luxury of doing a late budget is you shouldn't miss the first month of the year. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I have, uh, you, you've nailed a big thing that's been stirring in my skull. And yeah. so I've been strategizing in ways to recover that, you know, $120,000 elsewhere. One of the items I've uh, cracked the egg on is Wilkett Hydro is presently limited to operate at 90% of main plate. So if we had a, a megawatt of water available, we can only get 900 kW through the unit. So I circled back with the design engineers who actually redesigned the, the uh, turbine itself the last time it was rebuilt. And I asked them about increasing that top end. Hey, can we get another 5% out of this thing? Because that would be equate to a lot of money for us. So they've actually, they're going back uh, and going through their designs. They said, boy, it, it looks like uh, you could go higher. They want us, they're developing a test procedure right now because when they first installed uh, the new runner, that's what it's called, uh, the testing showed a lot of vibration above 90%, and that's why they nailed it down at 90%. But uh, I noticed in the water conditions that they did it in September, or before we started getting rain. So the tail race hydraulics, you know, if you have a lot of water, here's the top of the dam, and here's the water coming out of the hydro. If you have water coming over the dam, and your tail race is above what's trying to come out, well, that changes the whole equation. And will let it more more vibration or less vibration depending on that ratio and they had it at the worst end of that so i'm having them relook at that and let us know whether when that separation is where we want it hey can we get another five percent and make an extra 50 grand this year out of this unit so i'm trying to identify routes to recover these dollars and uh i'm, right. I'm, I'm trying to find some so what would, would that require uh, uh, a manual, like a manual intervention? Just no, all it'll it. require is a, a programming change in the control system. Okay. Yeah, so not, no, not a problem. Just off the level indicators. Yes, the level indicators would still control everything, but the control system would allow the blades to change angle further than they're allowed to right now, which would allow it to make more power. Uh, getting some back pressure from the more pressure, yep. So then, Mike, does that mean is what you and Beth are, are planning to do, what you showed us that in January we missed budget, is that is that the new budget with everything we're looking at right now, the thing we're approving? It's like we missed the first month of this budget we're approving. And yes. so, okay, yes. we could do it that way. And we just knew we're just, as a board of commissioners, we're going into the year knowing we're we're way behind so it's it's almost as if we're we're pretending we're approving this in december or january <laughs> I, I yeah i i would be more comfortable approving something that reflects the january actual and then that would just be a worse net result we're going to have a worse net result but i would rather be truthful yeah, yeah. sure i i I, yeah. I i think so and i think and i think there may be after the discussions today, another change. So I'm just wondering if, if with, with the mm -hmm. revision of having the January actual, and in fact, if we, if we move it to the next meeting, we'll have the February actual also, yeah. so we'll have two months of actual, and, and to reflect the budget on that basis. Yeah, and, there may, and there may be another change as well. Um, and does, does this budget include what we think might be the impact of the two new industrial ones? This number for industrial revenue and industrial costs, is that in there? Yes, they're in there, yep. So not to, uh, just quickly. And I, like I said in the report, they're, they're partial months, Mike. So next year, there'll be better numbers in there. Yep. Year. Sorry, Vince. Oh, wait, wait, wait a second, Vince. Before we go off on a new track altogether, let's, let's stay with just this one of what Mike and Beth want to do and make sure we can support it in the way of, the mechanics because the, the monkey's on their back to sort of translate sure. what, what are, so so um so what are you thinking mike I, I i'm with lynn i'm fine with what you articulated lynn but 
how can you two do that? Beth, can you do it? Or, or you know what? Sorry. <laughs> we got our we got our wants and needs and asks. Okay. And, you know, so you're reality. thinking that the budget numbers should be the actual incentives since we already have January. One of my thoughts is do you want it for every single account? Because some accounts <laughs> we budget evenly throughout the year. However, the way the numbers fall, it may fluctuate. So you want to just make, for instance, if we budgeted a hundred thousand, you want the whole year to still be a hundred thousand with just January, February with the actual, you would just spread everything else <laughs> out. It's an interesting question. That gets to, you know, how much extra busy work is justifiable. Yeah. yeah. Is well, value added. If you yeah. want it, I can make it happen. It's all numbers. I mean, the, the, ki the kilowatt hours are not the same every month. The purchase power is not the same every month. And those are, and those are the big drivers. The big drivers, yeah. Maybe so, we just do those. So it yeah. seems to so. me that those at least ought to reflect actual. If we've got you know, certain O&M numbers or something else where we were higher because people were spending their vacation in, in January for $13,000. I think on that, maybe we just use, maybe it's a blended thing and we just use the, the same. It strikes me there are two ways of doing it, either to, to use the, whatever number it was for that account before, because it's the same every month, or the other is to just use whatever it was in January, in January, subtract that from what the annual total was and reapportion the rest of it over the year. And I think it was you, Roger, that said, the big drivers are purchase power and operating revenue. So those might be two, ones to two accounts to focus in on. You mean the big drivers of variance? I wouldn't look at everything. Well, and the big account. drivers of the budget. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, um, uh, labor is a big driver too. Well, and 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 that. But that doesn't vary, really. Well, it, it may. doesn't so, vary from month to month. So looking at the the overall, so 125 over for January. If we were even the rest of the year, that's three and a half percent of our of our purchase power budget. So it's not a ginormous number. It's not a number I like, but it's not an out of control number. Um, but last there also year- be another month that it's just the opposite. That's what I was just gonna say. So last year oh, in sorry. June, in June, we were $60,000 under budget for the year. So, I mean, if we get another good June, we're looking at, you know, something less than 2%. Uh, so I'm just saying it's not, it's a bad number, but it's not a number that's good. I, I just, I'm uncomfortable with a budget that's being passed after the beginning of the year. If we were doing this back in December, you know, that's, that's fine, but we're not. We're, we're where we are. The, include and the real to, number. And to, and to put in numbers after the fact, I don't, there's some things I think it's okay to backdate. I don't think this is one. I wasn't that's, that's my view. I don't know how others feel. Frankly, Mike, the, the way I look at it, maybe you're seeing it differently, is it's it's kind of like a lot of busy work for you and Beth to tune it in, mostly Beth, I think. But it puts I, you I'm abs it, I am it puts you and us in a more solid position. Like it creates the balance of the year. We have more upside than downside. I, I'm absolutely not saying you yeah. shouldn't put whatever numbers in there you want and approve whatever yeah. numbers you right. want. Yeah. Not at all. Whatever, however you guys want to do it, I am 100% behind you. I'm just giving you information. Yeah. And busy work doesn't bother me. Yeah, that's not a problem. As long as it's right, I don't mind. Yeah. So here's what you do in a in a in a private enterprise business. You definitely make your January budget your actual. So there'd be yeah. zero variance in anything in January to just be what it was, because that's when we locked it in. And then you could go ahead and fiddle with the remaining 11 months in the budget. So your full year comes out where you want when some of the immaterial, less important items. Uh, um, that's how we do it. 
because otherwise, yeah, it, all the things Lynn articulated, otherwise you wouldn't yeah. really be comfortable with your integrity. That sounds good to me. So, so, so Lynn, I think, is that where, is that where yeah, you're coming no, from? No, that makes sense to me. And I think then we move approving the budget to next month. Yeah. Well, you, yeah, because only we're kind of approved. Yeah, you're right, because we don't have any of the specific numbers in front of we us. Don't have, we don't have the specific yeah. numbers, and, and there may be another number that changes. Right, we have some right. other stuff so, coming up here. Okay, well, that's cool. Have, but, but yeah. I have a question. So which direction do you want me to go? Do this for all the accounts or just the big ones? What do you want? Well, to you do? have two. There's two questions. Is do you, The answer is all the accounts, but you have a different mm -hmm. methodology for... For purchase power, it, the, the miss in January is gonna increase your total for the year. Mm -hmm. For your other accounts where it's puts and takes, I think what we're imagining is you keep your total for the year and you just put in the January yeah, number and then whatever's left, you spread across the 11 months. Gotcha. If so it's we'll, an account like that. We'll, that we'll, right, adjust, we'll adjust things upward for January and tell you where we did that. and. Make sure you're okay with it next month. And actually it'll be, since it'll be next month for January and February. Right. That's, yeah, yeah. Both, do, okay. do it for both yep. months. Okay. Okay. We can do that. Sorry, Vince, I cut you off. I, I wanted to just make sure we got that. No, no, thanks. I'll, I can get into the weeds. <laughs> uh, I just had a qu question about system loss. I know it came out to like 8% which seemed pretty, I mean, yeah. And I'm sure you're thinking about how to reduce system loss all the time, like uh, either line upgrades or transformer upgrades or something. So uh, what are the possibilities? Cause that's 8% of power purchase. That's a huge number, you know, like 1% less. No, no, no way. No way, man. Okay. Trans well, uh, trans we're, we're trans just Transformers alone are two and a half percent. And we're, we're running a distribution voltage. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, oh, I, I know. So, so, so go, go, go work through Ohm's law. No, yeah, yeah I, I, I did have my physics and E&M, and e &M, so. Uh, yeah, so I, I mean, I, I a, a really, if we were hitting all cylinders and, and we went and balanced all our loads perfectly and had no, you know, ground flows and, we were we had our rosy sunglasses on. We might be able to get down to five and a half percent. Okay, that would, be, that would be the greatest of all worlds. So between five and a half and eight and a half or so is pretty standard for a distribution utility. As low as you can go, the better. But to get below five and a half percent, you're going to spend more than what you're going to save. So you you can't replace the wires with superconducting wires. <laughs> not, not make it cost effective no no i'm kidding no. okay uh is there any other business if not um any other business mike you thought there was something but did you remember it yeah, it's, it's gone i'm sorry okay um i would like to move that we go into executive session to discuss an employee matter um, is there a second? Second. Second. Any opposition? Hearing none, it is 6.34 p.m. We are going into executive session. It is 7.10 p.m. Uh, and we are back in regular session. Uh, we were in executive session and no action was taken. Um, we oh, have man. on the agenda a second executive session. I would like to suggest that we also to discuss an employee matter. Um, I would like to suggest that we um, have a brief executive session to talk about how we may proceed, but I, th I think it's, it's already after seven, so I, I don't think we're gonna have a, a working session. Mike, if you um, and Beth 
get off. Can yeah. do, do, so does I'm that gonna, end? Does, does that end the Zoom? I'm going to make you the host. Okay. Right make now. you co-host or something. Yeah. So now you're the host. Okay. And we can we can chime out, or you can just mute and you can shut us off. You're in control now. Yeah. So 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 why do, we're we're not going to be long, but why don't you um, you two, if you don't mind, have a lovely rest of your evening. <laughs> and um, okay, we're meeting we'll at five, in... five o'clock tomorrow. Yes. Yes, we have a meeting at five tomorrow. Yeah, I'll um, try to keep it as, as condensed as possible. Um, and um, <coughs> yeah, so, so I'm we, not, and then we I'm can gonna, enjoy. I'm gonna leave. Do, okay. Yeah, but I'm not and touching this computer because I think if I leave the meeting, it's gonna end your meeting. Well, that was what I was asking. Yeah. So I'm just going to leave. And the recording as well, Mike? Since no, she can control you. the recording. How do I, okay. how do I don't want do that? Oh, stop. No, you don't oh, need we'll, to. You we'll just... Okay, I see the record button. Um, yep. Okay, so it is 7... Um, okay, so is there a motion to go into executive session? I so move. Second. Um, any objection? Thank you, Mike. Have Thank you all. Good meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Beth. Um, okay, so it is 712. No, it's still recording. Um, this is no, uh, shoot, I can't turn. Well, we're going to go procedural anyway. And, and I had told Mike that we were going to, um, I'm not seeing how to, how do I? Says recording still. No, I know it says recording, and I and there's a record button, and I'm trying to figure out how to, and it's letting he me record on this computer or record to the cloud. He's recording. I think he may be recording is the problem. Yeah. Maybe if I change it to record on this computer, and then it won't record to the cloud at least, and then I don't think we're not going to get into substance. I think we need to have another. So the purpose of this executive session was to talk about how we're going to do a review for Mike. Um, and since we're not going to get into the substance of that um, tonight, I think Roger sent out yep. um, something that I think we can work from. And what we really need to do is schedule a time to do this. And I think we probably mm -hmm. just need to have a separate meeting, um, which to keep things simple, or do you want to have us fill out the form and then just then meet? Well, we can all we can all think about it, but I think we have to discuss it. I think I I don't think it's it's something that uh, we can just assemble filled out forms. I think I think it warrants a, a discussion. Um, but I think I think Nat's right. I think to come into that discussion ready to compile and have a good discussion. Yeah, to, I think everybody should go through and try try it out. I have an Excel. Uh, version of it, you don't really need that to do it. But ultimately, that's what we'll use, you know, if you could, it doesn't take more than a few minutes to think through what you'd put as a rating. Right. So and what comments you might point them to. So what I can what I could do is I could send out a doodle poll to folks. Um, or we could try and figure out a time now. Um, as to when we can do it. it. It's so delayed. I would like to see us not delay it massively. Um, so if there's a time next week that would work for people, um, you know, I I'm think that could be. I'm pretty good I'm, next week. I'm flexible always. Well, does next month, I mean, does next Monday work for people? Let me check. I'm traveling. Uh, You're traveling. All right. When are you? When are you back, Roger? California, California, California. Uh, Thursday. I could do Thursday or Friday next week. Thursday, the thirty-first. Thursday, Thursday for sure. Sorry about that. Yeah. No, that's that's okay. That's okay. So, do we want is five good, or do people prefer to do it at seven and have dinner beforehand? I actually <laughs> can't. I have a meeting at four and one at five thirty. I can do Friday. I can't do Friday night. It's it, I don't do meetings on Friday night. Sorry. That's right. Okay. 
Um, yeah, I can't, unfortunately, I can't avoid these. How about this Thursday? This Thursday is... <laughs> Twenty-four. I have a meeting tomorrow. I have a meeting Wednesday. <laughs> Roger, are you traveling well, this Thursday? No, I'll be back. I could do Thursday. This Thursday? Let, let's do it. Let's Thursday do it. Thursday works for me. Okay. Somebody's got to send a Zoom out. At, I can. Do, I have. I have. I have a Zoom account that doesn't have a time limit on it, so I can send a Zoom to Great. to us. We just need uh, Mike can warn the meeting, um, and then we'll just Great. go and go into executive session, he doesn't need to, to, to be there. What, what time are we talking about, five or seven? Personally, I, I would- five. five. Yeah, I get cranky like Nat when it gets too late. <laughs> okay, five it, five it is? Yeah. Okay, so. It's the 24th. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yep. And I think it, I think that, what do you say? We should try to make it an hour meeting. Yeah. Yeah, and if every if everybody has gone through, sorry, uh, the stuff, then we should be. The, the stuff that be, Roger sent out. You mean? Yeah. Roger sent out. And thank and you. And I'll be able to put the actual, and I'll be able to put the actual um, Excel file on screen. And as we go through, I can type in words, I can type in numbers, you can see how it all looks. So I can I can support that. You want so to we have something to focus on. The form that you sent out has comments. Yeah. From Rager, comments from Ray Tid. But do you want to have a number scale or not? I mean, zero to five or anything like that or not? Yeah, if you look at the, the form in page two, it has the rating scale, the numbered rating scale. That goes in the first column. Well, page two. Oh, kind of got, know. yeah, kind of got squeezed. Okay. There were two emails I sent out. The first one had like a dozen pages in it. That, and I sent the second email with just the first page again, because oh, Vince, okay. Vince told me I kind of cut off the first column a little. Okay, so I look for both of those. Second. Okay, you know, I'll, I'll call. Them. Okay, good. Yeah, print them both out. Okay. So, that, that, all those extra pages are pretty important because they they describe, you know, what he's getting rated against, you know. Well, pretty, the, the words are pretty clear, but but that's good. I'll, I'll read that. I didn't, I didn't see that. You're and right. if, if people want to add things or vary okay. things, you know, that's something we can discuss in our in our meeting also um so but i i i i for one thank roger immensely for putting that together um so we're, we'll meet at five on thursday i will let ask mike to warn a meeting um you know it'll you be to warn, really have what? to warn that because i mean there's no we have to warn it now. We have to warn every meeting. No. Um, but the but what will happen is the only thing on the agenda will be an executive session. If someone from the public turns up, which is remote, then we'll you know <laughs> when we go into executive session, they will have to leave. Um, if they want to come back when we come at, you know, when we come out, it it's it's um, okay. So, I, I, yeah, but we have to have the, the process of warning it. Because um, one could say it's an administrative meeting, but anyway, I won't argue it with you. Um, okay. Anything else in executive session? Because if not, we can come out, which is, I mean, we've been recorded all the time anyway, but. Um, I don't okay. think it was anything confidential that uh, five o'clock tomorrow. So we have five o'clock tomorrow and then five o'clock on Thursday. All H E D all week. <laughs> Who's gonna bring the sweatshirts that say that? <laughs> Who's gonna bring the pizza and the beer? So Vince. Well that that raises an interesting question. Are we gonna do this on Zoom or are we gonna do it in person? Zoom. Zoom? Zoom, Zoom. it is. 
Uh, Vince, we can all get our own pizzas then. I'm going to be uh, very skeptical tomorrow, Vince. So I want short sentences and clarity. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I avoid those at all costs. Okay. <laughs> I was uh, let's of. come out. Let's come out of executive session. So even though we it's recorded, it's seven twenty one, and we are out of executive session. No action was taken. Um, is there a motion to? Is there any other business? Hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn? So I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Any objection? We are Mike. adjourned at 7.21 p.m. Thank you all. Have Thank a nice you. evening. See you tomorrow. Sure. Mike, yeah. you're, you're, you, it, it looks when you only see the upper half of you, Michael, that you have a bib on. Now, I, I've seen the no, whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, when I leaned back like this, I was looking. I looked like that guy in Beetlejuice who was sitting on the couch with a little head. Something funny like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hello, everybody. Bye. Have a good night. Good night.